So recently I went to Japan and the funny thing about Japan is that it takes 12 hours to get there and that's just the bit where you're in the air. The other funny thing about going somewhere is that eventually you'd need to come back. I guess that's not really true, but it was a vacation. So with this trip to Japan, I realized I had 24 hours of being crammed in a germ tube with 300 strangers to fill with, well, something. So with that full day of slowly feeling my butt go numb as I tried to get comfortable on a chair made in the 80s, I decided if Mappa wasn't gonna animate season three of One Punch Man, I'm just gonna catch up to the manga. I am so happy I did. After sitting down and reading from where the anime leaves off to the most recent chapter, I came to realize One Punch Man might be the greatest action manga ever written. But a big part of the narrative after the anime leaves off in One Punch Man revolves around all of the S-Class heroes in the universe, and more specifically how they deal with Garo and the League of Monsters. And as I was sitting there reading through all of these S-Class heroes in their battles against these monsters, I got to thinking, what's the hierarchy of power here? I mean, obviously, we know that the S-Class heroes and all heroes in One Punch Man have rankings. But as it currently stands in the anime, Saitama is a B-Class hero, and in the manga, he's an A-Class hero. So I don't know if we can really take those rankings as law. So I compiled my thoughts together of everything that happened in all the chapters I read and put all the feats together to make a full definitive list of all of the S-Class heroes ranked and explained. And there are 16 of them, so you better buckle up because this is going to be a pretty long video. But before we get to ranking or explaining anything, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noty bell. The S-Class Heroes, the world's premier defense against monsters, aliens, and any threats that might threaten extinction for humankind. Totaling 16 in number, they represent the strongest humans or cyborgs humanity has ever known. With the highest ranking S-Class heroes able to throw gravity altering punches and the very weakest still being able to go one-on-one -on -one against demon level monsters. There is no entry amongst S-Class heroes that is anything but incredibly strong. But that does not mean that there isn't a hierarchy to their power. The disparity between the 16 spot and the one spot amongst S-Class heroes is probably the biggest margin between the lowest ranking and highest ranking out of any of the letter grades in the One Punch Man universe. Except for maybe A, because all my mask should be an S-Class. And honestly, this disparity is kind of unfortunate when you consider the fact that the lowest ranking and self-proclaimed weakest member of the S-Class heroes is one of my favorite characters in the entire show. Because starting off this list at number 16, we have Puri Puri Prisoner. I love this man. Puri Puri Prisoner falls into the Bon Clay bucket. It's like you're arguably a harmful stereotype of the LGBTQ plus community, but also you're an incredible character. So like, how can we complain? Puri Puri Prisoner, who I'm going to be referring to as Triple P from now on, is the self-proclaimed weakest hero amongst the S-Class heroes. Now, this proclamation does happen before the events of the monster hideout raid when he sees a huge upgrade to his power, but unfortunately, pretty much everybody amongst the S-Class heroes sees a huge increase to their power during this arc. So even after this huge upgrade to his strength that allows him to take on multiple demon-class monsters simultaneously, he's still the weakest. Triple P, like a lot of S-Class heroes on this list, doesn't necessarily have a power. He's just seven foot two and cut to ribbons, but he has absolutely superhuman strength. I mean, Triple P is a prisoner and he lives in smelly lid prison. Whenever he's needed for hero work, he quite literally just busts through a thick steel wall to break out of the prison. He was able to defeat a demon level monster by hugging it really hard. He defeated the deep sea king and his power up during the monster hideout raid came in the form of vibration, also known as vibration angel. Essentially, Triple P has found a way to maximize the power of his punches and kicks and everything by mastering the vibrations in his body. By applying the vibrations in his body to act kind of like a drill, he's increased the power of his offensive output. With this power, Triple P has shown to be able to swim through concrete, kill a high-ranking demon class monster in the monster hideout raid, and even use his dark angel vibrating rush to injure the fused Orochi and Psychos monster that Terrible Tornado was fighting. Mind you, Psychos and Orochi, when they fused, were a threat level dragon threat. And while obviously Triple P alone wouldn't have been able to take on this monster, being able to injure it at all is saying something. On top of that, Triple P's body hair is so powerful that it's able to block attacks with his chest hair and arm hair working like Kevlar vest. For all intents and purposes, he's incredibly formidable, just not on this list. After Triple P, we have another dude who's just tall and ripped and strong, 
Tank Top Master. Tank Top Master is four inches taller than Triple P, coming in at seven foot six and a half, and is 350 pounds of 0% body fat. Tank Top Master is a lot like Triple P if you replaced him talking about boyfriends with tank tops. He's said to be one of the most physically strong human beings in existence, being able to throw chunks of earth the size of buildings at near the sound of speed. Now, unfortunately, Tank Top Master doesn't have a lot of feats. In fact, if it weren't for Purry Purry Prisoner saying that he was the weakest of the S-Class heroes, I probably would have put Tank Top Master there. See, Tank Top Master was able to hang with Human Garo for a little bit before Human Garo figured out his moves and then outdid him using martial arts. But simply being able to fight against Human Garo for a little bit and put Human Garo on the defensive is kind of a feat. Garo even states that Tank Top Master's physical strength matches that of Genos, who's got rockets attached to his arms and we saw this in the manga when he was able to throw an entire building with Puri Puri prisoner and black luster in it to get them into the fight however unfortunately for tank top master when he came against the likes of gums and fewer ugly he got munched but the power of the tank top got him through it so that's pretty good at least coming up at the 14th spot we have the only s class hero who had nothing to do with the monster hideout raid watchdog man now this might get me in a little bit of flack because watchdog man is technically ranked 12 and Watchdog Man effortlessly defeated Human Garo without even using his full strength. Technically, Watchdog Man has never lost a fight, and he was put in charge of City Q, which is considered the most dangerous city for monsters attacking. He can effortlessly rip off the heads of demon class monsters, and he was able to almost fatally wound Human Garo without using his full power. Garo actually wondered while fighting against Watchdog Man if his power and agility were endless, as Watchdog Man, much like Garo, is able to adapt to a person's fighting style and find an outcome that leads to victory. But because Watchdog Man wasn't included in the Monster Hideout raid, it's hard to say how good he would have done against the higher ups. And actually, almost every single major hero that we see in One Punch Man has a rating from the Hero Association in terms like endurance, strength, agility, but everything for Watchdog Man is a question mark. The only answers that they have are popularity and effectiveness. So not even the Hero Association knows how strong he is. And since Human Garo probably would have got worked by the majority of the higher ups of the Monster Association, I can't really put Watchdog Man that high. Coming up at number 13 is another one people probably aren't gonna love, and honestly, I don't love either. Because coming in at number 13 is Zombie Man. Don't get it even remotely twisted? I'm getting a zombie man tattoo. I love him. The scene where he's like, all right, I'm all healed up. Now for more violence. Arguably one of the hardest manga panels of all time. Zombie Man is actually rumored to be one of the weakest S-class heroes. He, by his own admission, says that fighting is not his forte. Because Zombie Man's true strength is just, he has almost limitless regeneration and an indomitable will. Zombie Man has recovered entire limbs that have been blown off, the back of his skull being blown out of his head. He has come back from being set on fire, placed in corrosive acid, stepped on. There is arguably nothing that can kill Zombie Man, at least, Yet, the only way that Zombie Man can truly die is if he's turned into mincemeat, like run through a meat grinder. And because he has infinite regeneration, he technically has infinite stamina. See, Zombie Man was created in the House of Evolution, the same place that made Carnage Kabuto, and he became famous because he once fought a monster for 140 hours. And in the Monster Hideout raid, Zombie Man found himself up against a demon level threat who could very easily and did very easily kill him 200 times. However, the fight only lasted a half hour because once that demon class monster got tired, Zombie Man just killed him. And that's Zombie Man's true strength. You kill him until you get tired and then he kills you. But the thing is, Zombie Man's weapons are a machete, an axe, and desert eagles. And there is plenty of monsters in the One Punch Man universe that are both blade resistant and bullet resistant. But if you think Zombie Man's abilities are weird, wait until we get to the next entry on this list, Pig God. Pig God is the 10th ranked member of the S-Class Hero. But after the events of the Monster Hideout, I think there's a couple people who are ranked lower than him that jumped over him. Pig God's entire ability is that he can digest food inhumanely quick, and he is more than willing to get as much food into that stomach as possible. But just being able to dissolve things quickly is not the entirety of Pig God's ability. See, Pig God has complete and total control over his digestive tract. That means he can turn his digestive tract up to 10 to dissolve whatever he wants to in minutes, or turn it completely off to make his stomach a storage unit. Pig God has been shown to store up to nine people in his stomach at once. Pig God is also incredibly fat, and that is 
one of his abilities. See, Pig God has an incredibly thick layer of fat around his body, and that fat is actually one of his greatest strengths, as it gives him an insane level of defense. See, during the Monster Hideout raid, Pig God's true enemy was Gum, a eventual dragon level threat who also was really good at eating things. And Pig God was actually able to go toe to toe against Gums for a little bit before he lost. But keep in mind that Gums is a dragon level threat, and that dragon level threat in Gums actually wasn't able to bite through the fat layer of Pig God implying that Pig God's durability and defense is arguably one of the highest in the show. On top of this, even though you wouldn't believe it, Pig God is sneaky quick, like dodging surprise attacks level quick, and he's been shown to be able to sprint at relatively high speed. However, should Pig God need to move and fight a lot, he burns off his fat, until eventually he's left a skinny husk of what he used to be. In this form, without his insulary fat layer, he's significantly weaker, so he needs to eat a bunch more things in order to get fat again. Unfortunately, all we really see from Pig God, outside of saving a lot of the S-Class heroes, during the monster hideout raid that he's able to defeat the demon class monster the great food tub outside of that unfortunately the rest of the battle was pretty much him just getting worked by gum but like i said being able to even stand up to gums even briefly considering the fact he was a dragon level threat is saying something coming up after pig god we have one of the people that pig god actually saved child emperor now i know i know i know this feels too high for child emperor and maybe it is child emperor is simply the weakest version of a cyborg on the s-class heroes and there's four of them but child emperor had some legitimately impressive feats in the monster hideout arc you see child emperor is a child but a genius child and his true strength comes from his brain even though it is stated that child emperor is as strong as the majority of the class a heroes his s-class strength comes from his brain but physically as a 10 year old he is stronger than stinger who was an A-class hero. On top of that, he has incredible speed and reflexes, being able to dodge an attack from evil mineral water. But just like with Drive Knight and Metal Knight and Genos, his true strength comes from his gadgets. Child Emperor has a backpack filled with Octo-Octavius arms and weapons. These tools have blades and buzz saws and claws and taser. On top of that, Child Emperor has made an army of little robots, like his underdog man robots, or his mini Octotank number eight, or most importantly, his brave giant which is a giant mech suit capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a dragon-level threat. Yes, a dragon-level threat, because Child Emperor stumbles upon Phoenix Man during the Monster Association arc. He becomes a dragon-level threat, one which Child Emperor is able to defeat using his intellect. Now, Child Emperor obviously admits that there was ways that reincarnated Phoenix Man could have defeated him. And Phoenix Man was significantly stronger than Child Emperor, though he did have one glaring weakness. But the ability to diagnose that glaring weakness is what makes Child Emperor strong. But using your brain is boring, which is why at number 10, we have Metal Bat. Now, I have seen a lot of ranking lists that put Metal Bat way too high. Don't get it even remotely twisted. I love anybody with a pompadour, and Metal Bat is awesome. In terms of like sheer cool factor, he's probably the coolest character in One Punch Man. But there's a reason he's S class rank 15. He doesn't really match up to a lot of the other S class heroes. He, like Tank Top Tiger, was absolutely no match for human Garo. But that doesn't mean Metal Bat is anything to scoff at. I mean, he was able to destroy Senior Centipede's exoskeleton with one swing of his bat, something even Genos couldn't accomplish. And technically, his strength might be infinite because the longer a battle drags on and the more pumped up he gets, the stronger he gets. And that's why a lot of people scale him to like third or fourth on the list, which I think is insane. Like, yes, there is the possibility that he could get infinitely pumped up and therefore get infinitely strong. There's also the possibility that if Finks from Hunter x Hunter spent a year cranking his arm up, he could deliver a punch that wiped out a universe, but we don't know that. What we do know is that Metal Bat is incredibly fast, though stated by the mangaka Murata to be slower than Sonic. And when we're talking about the highest level of power in One Punch Man, Sonic's speed isn't even that fast. Now, Metal Bat has fought against the highest level of power in One Punch Man. Metal Bat fought against Sage Centipede side by side with Garo in the manga, and Sage Centipede is said to be the manifestation of Earth's anger towards humans. Sage Centipede is about as far into dragon level threat as you can get. Sage Centipede is going toe to toe with a monsterized Garo. And while technically Metal Bat did do like a little bit of damage against Sage Centipede, Garo was stated to be doing the majority of the work, with Sage Centipede saying that he's not worried about the dude with the bat, but he's worried about Garo. So while it's impressive that Metal Bat was able to hang in this fight and not get killed by Sage Centipede, let's admit it, he was getting carried. So yes, do I love him? Yes, do I love the Pompadour? Yes, do I think he has a massive amount of potential because he only gets stronger the longer a fight drags on? Absolutely. But we've seen him at what I believe to be the current end of his limit 
limits, and the highest level of dragon level threat didn't consider him to be much. After Metal Bat, we have the Renji of the One Punch Man universe, Genos. I want to love Genos so badly. I really, I really do. He's a great character. His growth has been dynamic. His relationship with Saitama is funny, but he is addicted to losing. Genos is S-Class rank 14, and all of his strength comes from being a cyborg. I guess the better comparison would have been that Genos is a lot like Vegeta, because he's always losing, but after every loss, he gets stronger. See, pretty much every battle that Genos has ever been in, he gets destroyed, which isn't a problem as long as Genos' power core doesn't get destroyed along with him. And usually all that gets destroyed with Genos are his arms and his legs, leaving his torso where the power core is. But every time he's destroyed, Dr. Kusuno, the man who made him into a cyborg, gives him upgrades. And these upgrades make him faster and more powerful and have bigger lasers. And as it currently stands, he's the fastest and most powerful and has the biggest lasers he's ever had. See, there's pretty much nothing that Genos doesn't have attached to his body. He has arm blades, incineration cannons, detachable limbs to increase his range. In his current Monster Association arc upgrade after his battle against the Elder Centipede, Genos is able to go full power mode for 10 seconds. In this full power mode, Genos' raw destructive power is said to be on par with Drive Knight and Metal Knight. However, should Genos overuse this form, his power core will overheat and explode, actually killing him. And in this form, Geno states that he would have been able to destroy the giant meteor he was unable to destroy earlier in one shot. He's also able to deflect the strongest attack from Psychos in Orochi's fusion, which is probably the third strongest monster we've ever seen. But only being able to hold that form for 10 seconds before he dies and explodes and kills everybody around him, not great. And therefore, he's coming in at number nine. And coming in right above him is the better version of the cyborgs in the S-Class heroes, Drive Knight. You see, Drive Knight is a tough spot because for the majority of the Monster Association arc, he's presumed dead. In fact, Drive Knight has one thing that Genos can definitely not claim, and that's that he's never lost in combat. Drive Knight is incredibly confident in his battle prowess, and that's well warranted. A lot of Drive Knight's power is derivative of the fact that he's incredible at gathering information. Drive Knight takes every single fight he's in incredibly seriously, even if the enemy is weak. Taking time to fully understand an enemy's moveset before he makes a move of his own. And also, any enemy who's ever seen his abilities, Drive Knight makes sure to kill off, so they'll never find out and exploit his weaknesses. Drive Knight also accomplished something else that Genos couldn't even dream of, and that that's defeating a dragon level monster. Drive Knight was relatively easily able to wipe out one of the Monster Association's executives. Now he admits that this was possible because he had seen the executive fight prior, but still being able to gather intelligence and build a good battle plan for the person that you're gathering intelligence on is a strength. And Sure, did some A and B class heroes die to get that information gathered? Maybe! Drive Knight also, unlike Genos, has multiple different forms. He has his knight form that makes him into a centaur. In this form, his speed on the ground is increased and his leg strength is obviously increased because it's legs of horses. His silver form allows him to grow swords from his hands as long as he needs them to be. And these swords were able to pierce dragon level monsters and absolutely decimate tiger level monsters. He also has his chariot form, which turns Drive Knight into a motorcycle with lances on the front of it. He also has his flying chariot mode that essentially makes him into an F-16 fighter. But if he needs the bulk up, he has his bishop form that essentially makes him into a giant mech. A giant mech that, mind you, was able to take shots from the few psychos Orochi fighter jet thing. Yeah, the manga is kind of a trip. But showing a durability feat of being able to take blows from Psychos Orochi's fused form is crazy. And it puts Drive Knight substantially above Genos, who had to use his max output power simply to reflect one of those attacks from Psychos Orochi. Now, you could argue that the jet form of Psychos Orochi is weaker than the one that Genos came up against, and that would be fair. But still, he showed a durability feat that allowed him to tank shots from the same enemy that Genos couldn't. And lastly, Drive Knight has the gold form. The gold form allows Drive Knight to heat up his body to an insane level. With this heat, he can either kill anybody who's tried to sneak into his body or add extra power to his offensive blows. On top of this, when Drive Knight's energy levels are depleted, he's able to glom onto other cyborgs like Genos, essentially creating a majestic attire Susano, but with cyborg, using other cyborgs like batteries for his technology. So while yes, we didn't get to see Drive Knight for the majority of the Monster Association arc, the fact that he killed a dragon level monster and went toe to toe with Psycho Sorochi means he's gotta be pretty high on this list. But much to his chagrin, not as high as the next entry on our list, quite literally Drive Knight's eternal rival, the person who he thinks is a mole in the Hero Association, 
Metal Knight, also known as Bafoy. Power scaling Metal Knight is kind of weird because when I consider Metal Knight, I'm not just considering one of the Metal Knight. While just one of the Metal Knights definitely packs a punch, Metal Knight more roughly refers to an entire network of robots controlled by Bafoy. Unfortunately, because Metal Knight really had nothing to do with the Monster Association arc, there's not a whole lot to scale him off, so this is kind of a speculative spot. Do we know that Metal Knight at least sent one of his Metal Knights to the Monster Association hideout to possibly do reconnaissance and that that Metal Knight was defeated by Orochi? But the thing is, Bafoy's motivations to sending this Metal Knight to the Monster Association is kind of hazy. The Drive Knight told Genos that Metal Knight is his enemy. And Drive Knight believes that Metal Knight is actually the mole within the Hero Association and is trying to kill Genos for some reason. Truly, the only reason that I have Metal Knight this high up outside of pure speculation is that Psycho's listed Metal Knight as one of the only people who would have been able to defeat Elder Centipede. Right up there with Terrible Tornado, who, little spoiler here, is number two on this list. So while it might feel stupid to play somebody who has basically next to no battle feats above a bunch of other very powerful proven battle feat people, there's a lot of speculation that he could be one of the strongest people in the universe. Though Saitama did just absolutely trash his entire robot network at the new association hideout for all of the A-class heroes and a bunch of rich people, but that's Saitama. How about we get back to talking about people we know things about? Because coming up at number six is the Atomic Samurai. The Atomic Samurai, or Kamikaze, has always been one of the stronger S-Class heroes. Considered the strongest swordsman on Earth with attacks so fast that he can turn enemies into mincemeat in nanoseconds. In fact, Black Luster, or Super Alloy Darkshine, for some reason he's got a couple of different names, stated during his fight with Garo, while Garo was in his half-monsterized form, that if this Garo, who was fighting on even footing with Black Luster, were to come up against Atomic Samurai, that Garo would die before he even got to use some of his favorite techniques. His blade is so fast that even Sonic can't see when it's drawn. He was able to dispense of demon level monsters like Rhino Wrestler without breaking a sweat, and by himself was able to push one of the stronger dragon level threats out of all of the monsters in the Monster Association, Black Sperm, into a corner. See, Atomic Samurai is a part of the Council of Swordmasters, and not like the Demon Slayer Nichiren Katana, because Nichiren Katana quite literally directly translates to Sunblade. Now, this Sunblade is a legendary blade that's been passed down through the Council of Swordmasters for generations. An Atomic Samurai, who's considered the strongest swordsman possibly in human history, struggles to get the sword out of the hilt. For those of you who aren't caught up with the manga, you're probably very confused as to what I'm talking about right now. So Black Sperm is a dragon level monster threat. I think his final number is something like 55 trillion copies. But when he combines a bunch of his bodies, and we are talking trillions of bodies together, he gets an ultimate form of sword. And while Gold Sperm was technically not his ultimate form because that was actually Platinum Sperm, this very very same golden sperm was able to almost effortlessly dispense of black luster and fukor ugly so the fact that atomic samurai was able to cut off his arm and if he had enough key probably would have been able to kill him speaks wonders for his power but since atomic samurai doesn't have enough key to wield the sun blade for a significant amount of time i can't put him much higher than this however should one day he acquire the moon blade which is the twin blade to the sun blade and become the sword master like the council of the sword masters ordained he would be well then yeah he would be inarguably strong than everybody except maybe Blast and Tornado. Man, after saying all that stuff, I really don't think I should put Super Alloy Darkshine above Atomic Samurai, especially now that I'm looking at their stats and Black Luster as a 61 and Atomic Samurai as a 62. Okay, you know what? Audible at the line of scrimmage, we're swapping it. Atomic Samurai 5, Black Luster 6. Black Luster is considered to be the strongest human in existence. Black Luster just started lifting weights one day until eventually he couldn't find things that were heavy enough for him to lift anymore. He's seven feet, eight and a half inches in 550 50 pounds of lean cut muscle. And that muscle has, in essence, made him a human tank. See, just like with Puri Puri Prisoner or Tank Top Master, his ability is just strength. In fact, it's believed that Black Luster is the most durable hero in existence, as his massive size, nigh invulnerability, and sheer strength make him almost impossible to defeat. In fact, before his fight against Garo, he didn't believe he could be hurt. He is by far and away the most physically fit hero on Earth. Blackluster is stated to be able to kill monsters like the Deep Sea King with a light touch. In his battle against the half-monsterized Garo, it was stated that he was the peak 
of physical combat. And for all intents and purposes, for the first half of Black Luster's battle against half monsterized Garo, he was beating the hell out of him. Essentially, Black Luster walks around in a human mech suit, as his skin and muscles are harder than steel, making any attack essentially just glance directly off him. And here's the thing, when Black Luster technically lost against Garo, he only lost because he gave up in his own head. You see, it had been so long since Black Luster got hurt that when he started to get a nosebleed and coughed up a little bit of blood, he got into his own head that Garo may be able to hurt him. But at the end of the day, Garo barely scratched him. It stated that Black Luster's physical strength is impossible to quantify. He, much like Vegeta or Goku, has to weight train in a room with 15 times Earth's gravity. But honestly, I believe that Golden Sperm would be relative to Black Luster. The fact that Atomic Samurai was able to cut off Golden Sperm's arm means he probably could cut off his head and therefore could probably cut off the head of Black Luster? I don't know. I'm spitballing, but I just feel more comfortable with Atomic Samurai higher up on this list than Black Luster. Now, I have a feeling I'm going to get a lot of flack for this next entry because a lot of people believe that he's actually one of the weaker S class heroes, but I just don't see it. Because coming in at number four, we have Flashy Flash. Now, Flashy Flash is S class hero rank 13. But Nick, if he's rank 13, why do you have him at four? Well, here's the thing Flashy Flash is inarguably the fastest member of the S class heroes. While his draw speed might technically be slower than Atomic Samurai's, his movement speed is absolutely faster than anybody else. Oh, I made a mistake earlier. I said that Black Luster said it was Atomic Samurai who would be able to kill Garo before he used any of his fun techniques. But he was actually talking about Flashy Flash, which makes my list look a lot better right now. Like Bob Ross said, baby, happy accidents. Regardless, when it comes to feats, I believe Flashy Flash arguably has the most impressive out of anybody on this list. Flashy Flash is the only person out of all of these S-Class heroes who defeated two Dragon Level threats simultaneously. In a 1v2 situation against Hellfire Flame and Gale Wind, Flashy Flash was able to kill both of them without really exhausting himself or sustaining any real damage. There's people on this list who couldn't defeat one threat level dragon. He did two at the same time. But I'll say it's not even the most impressive thing that Flashy Flash does in the Monster Association arc. See, after defeating those two dragon level threats, Flashy Flash actually gets caught under a bunch of rubble. And after being caught under this rubble, he loses his katana, insta-kill. Well, Flashy Flash obviously has speed, having a sword moving at that speed significantly adds to his offensive ability. But after that battle, he lost that sword. The reason that that's so significant is because after breaking out of the underground and dealing with all of the things him and Saitama do with Blast, Flashy Flash enters a three-way battle with Platinum Sperm, Evolved Garo, and himself. And while Flashy Flash admits that both of these people are faster than him, he's able to hang in the battle without his main weapon for a good amount of time, significantly longer than almost anybody else on this list would be able to last. Because mind you, Platinum Sperm was very close to a god level threat. He was able to go toe to toe with an evolved Garo better than anybody else. The fact that Flashy Flash was able to hang in that battle between Platinum Sperm and evolved Garo for even any amount of time is one of the most impressive things that somebody could do. Now, here's the problem with number three. See, at number three, I have Silver Fang, or Bang. And I'm very confident with where I'm placing him, except for the fact that I don't know if he could have accomplished what Flashy Flash accomplished. Like, I know Silver Fang is stronger than Flashy Flash, but Flashy Flash can do things that Bang wouldn't be able to do. So while Bang is certifiably stronger than Flashy Flash, I don't think the gap is as far as people might believe. Bang is the S-Class third ranking hero. He's an elderly martial arts master who was once known as Bang of the Blood Wind. See, Bang had actually once been a young and confident martial artist who used a completely different martial arts technique than the one he uses now. See, what he uses now is called Water Stream Rock Smashing Fist. The entire purpose of this martial art form is to redirect people's strikes. It's completely defensive. Well, obviously in this martial art, there was return strikes, which led to Garo calling it the perfect blend of offense and defense. At one point in Bang's martial artist career, he had used a different martial art, specifically exploding heart release fist. And unlike his current martial art style, this martial art style focused primarily on destructive and offensive power. However, after losing his way as a martial artist, Bang locked this martial art away, dedicating himself to only using martial arts defensively for the rest of his life. Bang is considered quite possibly 
arguably the greatest close combat fighter on Earth. In a battle against Black Luster, while he wasn't able to injure Black Luster, he repeatedly redirected all of his attacks and slammed him into the ground over and over and over again. And it's because these two are relatively evenly matched that they're considered the pillars of the hero world. And this is why when we consider the fact that the bang we see in the anime and the manga is significantly weaker than it used to be in his heyday. And I know I stated earlier that nobody else killed two dragon level threats simultaneously, but Bang has also done it. And while obviously fighting two dragon level threats simultaneously is incredibly impressive, it wasn't nearly as impressive as Bang's final battle against Gara. Manga spoilers ahead, though this entire video has kind of been manga spoilers, so I apologize. But in this final battle against evolved Garo, mind you, Garo reveals that he had once seen Bang's hidden scrolls about the exploding fist technique. And because Garo is able to master fighting techniques, Techniques by simply seeing them just one time, he began to use it against Bang. And Bomb, Bang's brother, who was watching this fight, said that if Bang were to simply use his perfected heart explosion fist against Garo's heart explosion fist, that he would have defeated him. However, because Bang decided to never use that martial art again, he continued to use his water streaming fist and was therefore defeated. But in essence, what we're hearing here is that Bang very much could have defeated evolved Garo if he had just dipped his toes into ethical gray areas and being able to defeat arguably the second strongest being we've ever seen in One Punch Man in a one-on-one -on -one battle speaks a lot towards your power. But once again, I put in a super awkward place because coming in at number two is Terrible Tornado, and I don't think she could win in a 1v1 against Awakened Garo. But like Terrible Tornado is stronger than Bang. My head's all jumbled, man. But whatever, let's talk about it. Coming in at number two is Terrible Tornado. Tatsumaki, or Terrible Tornado, is the S-Class Rank 2 hero. She's an Esper, which many believe is a reference to Murata's other manga, Mob Psycho 100. And she is also considered to be the second most powerful out of all of the S-Class hero. Her psychic powers seem relatively boundless. I'm sorry, Murata isn't the mangaka for One Punch Man in Mob Psycho 100. He's just the person who's illustrating the webcomic for One Punch Man. Tatsumaki is the product of human experimentation to make an Esper super soldier. Her Esper abilities are so strong that many people believe that there's not a being alive that could defeat her through conventional means. The Hero Association, for all intents and purposes, considers her their ultimate weapon. In fact, Blackluster told Garo that if he came into combat against Tornado, he would instantly lose. And while for human and monsterized Garo, I believe that to be true, don't know if it would be true for Awoken Garo. Because for all intents and purposes, her Esper ability is insane. I guess in essence, she also defeated two dragon level threats simultaneously, except in her circumstance, these two dragon level threats used. She twisted it into a braid so hard it turned the entire city the monster was planted into, into a whirlpool. That's right. She twisted a city. On top of that, let's not forget her earlier feat of being able to stop all of Boro's bombardment and just send it back at his ship. Mind you, Boro is quite literally a planet-toppling alien. On top of that, Tatsumaki is able to make psychic barriers so powerful that it was able to fully nullify the strongest attack Psycho Sorochi had. And that was only when the barrier was around herself. She was also able to envelop the entirety of City Z in a barrier that Psycho Orochi couldn't break out of. And the thing is, even after defeating Psycho Orochi, quite literally the strongest monster in the Monster Association, Tatsumaki had enough energy left to help other S-Class heroes in their battle against the higher ranking monsters in the Monster Association. Her stamina and endurance is almost supernatural, which allows her to use her incredibly broken psychic powers for much longer than anybody would anticipate. But unfortunately, even with all that strength, She's not nearly as strong as our number one entry on this list, the strongest human ever born Blast. His nickname is the strongest human alive, but we all know it's actually Saitama. Blast is the first ranked S-Class hero, and quite honestly, he deserves it. Blast for the last 20 years actually hasn't even been on Earth. 20 years ago, a partner of his and a couple of other collaborators began a multi-dimensional search for cubes that can turn humans into monsters. However, the search for these cubes really ramped up two years ago when Blast found himself in combat against Elder Centipede. And when Blast was about to kill the Centipede, God 
Odd presented himself to Blast, offering him power to act as his conduit. This led Blast down the path of trying to figure out what this god was trying to accomplish by giving its power to humans. And thus, Blast only returns to Earth when it is in true perilous danger, as he usually exists in different dimensions trying to look for this god or answers to questions. We actually don't know a huge amount about Blast's abilities, however. See, it's largely implied that Blast would have been able to win in a fight against Cosmic Fear Mode Garo. But Blast was trying to hold back against this version of Garo because he was trying to limit the amount of collateral damage. And therefore, Blast had to focus more on teleporting these nuclear explosions away than trying to defeat Garo. On top of this, a slightly less impressive feat is that Blast was able to defeat Elder Centipede, something that Bang, Bomb, and Genos couldn't do together. But Fabuki, also known as Blizzard, hypothesizes that Blast would be able to defeat all of the S-Class heroes simultaneously. Which makes sense when we consider the fact that Garo, at least in the webcomic, did exactly that. And we saw Blast fight on par with Cosmic God Fear Mode Garo. But how is Blast this powerful? Well, he's faster than Flashy Flash, he's stronger than Black Luster, and he's completely resistant to radiation. But his true strength comes from at least what we've seen thus far, portal creation and gravity manipulation. Blast can create portals that teleport him and other people to anywhere he wants them to go. This includes to other dimensions. On top of this, Blast is able to manipulate gravity to increase the power of his punches. When he combines these two things together, Blast is able to attack people from all angles or even throw them through portals so they fall directly onto his gravity boosted fist. When we consider the fact that his battle IQ is quite possibly the highest out of any of the S-Class heroes, the combination of these two abilities is very broken. And the thing is, that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg with Blast, at least that's what we believe. As Blast begins to understand more and more about the cubes, and maybe even more and more about God, there's a solid possibility that we'll get to see more of his abilities, and possibly even a power-up. But yes, of course, Blast, the s rank number one hero, is the top of our list. Or is he? Because there's still one person we haven't talked about. The strongest human on Earth. The wielder of the King Engine. The man who, using his super destructive beam ray, was able to kill evil mineral water and platinum sperm simultaneously. The man so powerful that dragon level demons quiver when they see his facade. The man so talented in video games that he drives Saitama almost insane. There could be no other stronger hero than King. He is the only hero in the entirety of the Hero Association to have a 10 in every single category. The only hero in the Hero Association to have a perfect 80 power level. There is no human, no alien, no god, no extraterrestrial being that rises to the power of King. And as long as he fights for the Hero Association, we can sleep at night. And that's it guys, all of the S-Class heroes ranked and explained. Did you agree with my rankings? Where would you have put your S-Class heroes in a grand ranking scheme? Tell me in the comments below and why you guys are down there, please, for me. Like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. Listen, all I'm saying is King Solo's Dragon Ball. Easy as that.